Okay, in regards to this, these are heavy duty. We do a lot of spices. That's what makes it the world's best, guys. And it is gonna be amazing. Hey everyone, I'm Dave, and today we're making the world's, well, we're making my favorite Chex Mix recipe. And when I say my favorite, I mean an insane recipe, guys. Absolutely insane. This is actually better than any Chex Mix I've ever had, so let's get started. Normally on this channel, I cook the world's best recipes by Googling the best recipe and then cooking the top result. And I already did that with Chex Mix. And when I was doing that with Chex Mix, there were several times where I mentioned my personal favorite Chex Mix, which I thought was slightly better than the one I Googled. Meaning that my recipe, I think, can beat out the Google recipe. A lot of you, after seeing that, said you wanted me to prove it, to show you my recipe, and you know, so you could try it yourselves. And so that's what we're doing today. We're gonna sh do my favorite recipe of Chex Mix. It's super savory, super delicious, but we have to start with a disclaimer. Disclaimer is, rice Chex is sold out everywhere. Everywhere, I went all over the place. I found corn Chex. But yeah, so these are the normal Chex cereals. There's corn and rice. And in my favorite recipe, I like to do corn and rice and I leave out the wheat because who likes the wheat checks anyways? Well, comment down below if you do. If you can't find rice checks, there's a workaround. And right now, you know, we got a nationwide rice checks shortage apparently. Let me introduce you to my friend, Mr. Crispix. Now, Mr. Crispix is basically check cereal, but instead of having rice or corn varieties, they have a rice and corn variety. So you've got one half, show it to the camera there, that is rice, that dark side, and then if you flip it over, that's the corn side. So each tasty morsel has both flavors in one, so it's a perfectly good substitute. Tastes just is good in my opinion and in my family's opinion. So we're going with Crispix today if we have enough of them. If not, we might have to mix in some corn checks too. But you know, that's what happens when you're making checks. That's really one of the fun things about making checks is you get to have some fun with it and be adventurous and try new things. We need a giant bowl. So get out a giant bowl if you got one because we're gonna get started right away here. So basically we're starting off by adding our dry ingredients. Now, I'm gonna do nine cups of Crispix into my bowl. Now, if you did find, oops, <laughs> wrong side, hold on. This is a two cup measure, so two, four. See, I might run out here because I made this recipe before and therefore I'm running a little short. Four, but I do have the corn checks to make up for it if I need it. Now, if you do have rice check cereal and corn check cereal, go ahead and do four and a half cups of each. Four and a half cup of rice, four and a half cups of corn. There's six cups of Crispix, there's eight. And we need nine total, so I think we're just gonna make it by the skin of our teeth here. Yep, nine cups. Beautiful, we did it, guys. I was scared I wouldn't have enough. If you want to do wheat checks, you can do three cups, three cups, three cups. You just want the total cereal amount to be nine cups uh, in total, and it can be any mixture of what you want. It could be Crispix, it could be three different varieties of checks. There's other checks too, like honey ones. I've never tried those in a Chex mix, but if you want to be adventurous, you can. Then we want to add three to four cups of other dry ingredients, whatever you like. I'll tell you what I like, and you can copy me if you want. I love me some pretzels. So I do a cup of those, or way too much, hold on. A cup of pretzels I add to it. They're a classic, you know, you kind of need to put the pretzels. Nice thing about the pretzels too is my kids don't eat them. The Cheez-Its on the other hand, my kids do eat, so I add those. One cup of Cheez-Its. Cup of nuts, this is just uh, cocktail peanuts. Uh, it's because it's what I had. I, any nut I think is good in this. I would say my favorite is cashew, if you have some. If you want to splurge, go with cashews. And then for my kids, I put in a cup of the goldfish. Now, goldfish and Cheez-Its do not really take on a ton of the flavor. So remember that, which, you know, some think it's good, some think it's bad. A lot of people would prefer a bagel chip, a pita chip, something like that. And again, that's all fine. I honestly think the mixture of dry ingredients kind of due to your taste. What really matters is the seasoning we use, how much seasoning we use, how we cook it, that's what really matters the most. And of course, the real garlic, which normally you're not gonna put in Chex Mix, but we are, and it's amazing. So now that we have all our dry ingredients, I'm just gonna set that aside. We'll use that in a minute, and we're gonna get to chopping our garlic. 
So as far as chopping the garlic goes, you just want to get the skin off of it and then chop it up. I use four cloves. You can use less, you can use more, but I think if you want the world's best Chex Mix, you gotta go heavy on the garlic. The garlic is what really makes it sing, if you know what I mean. So I'm just gonna get the skin off these and start chopping. I'll say this, there are some people that would recommend a microplaner. And a microplaner is basically a cheese grater, <laughs> but really, really small, and it makes really, really fine, fine little pieces of whatever you're shredding or grating or whatever. And the, again, this is where I remind anyone who watches my channel, I'm not a professional cook. I cook for fun. I'm just a dad who likes to look up recipes and try them. Now with Chex Mix and with a lot of recipes, I've developed a favorite and then made varieties on that favorite. But almost all the recipes I cook still to this day are things I Googled and looked up and said, oh, how do I cook this? And then over time, eventually made it my own in a few ways. Just like my chili recipe on my channel, which is amazing, by the way. If you want to try an amazing chili, check that one out. Smoked and chuck roast and deliciousness will blow you away. So just chop up the garlic finely. Again, you could microplane it later if you want to, if you don't want to chop it up. I like doing bigger chunks of it because then you can like, when you're snacking on the Chex Mix later, you can actually seek out the garlic chunks and eat one on purpose, which I do like to do. So, but I'm a garlic-aholic. Don't be surprised. All right, so that's pretty chopped. We're gonna set that aside, clean up my mess really quick and I'll be right back. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take some butter and melt it. We need six tablespoons worth. So I've got just a stick of butter here and I'm just gonna use the little measurements on the side and just cut it at the six tablespoon measure. And then I'm outside for the first time doing my video outside. Normally I do it inside, but I'm trying to make like a little outside area so I can make more videos. And therefore I need a way to cook. So I'm gonna try this little induction cooktop because I don't know. Might as well try something. Hopefully it works well. Obviously easier for you if you're in your house. You can just turn on your stove to medium heat, which is what I'm doing, just medium. And I'm gonna throw the butter in there and let it start melting away. And we'll just let it do its thing. Start, there we go, now it's cooking. Now while that cooks, we're gonna get some of our spices ready. Our spice mixture. Actually, you know what? We might just put the spice right into there. I think that might save us a bowl, but let's at least get them out. Garlic powder, onion powder, seasoned salt, Worcestershire, and is that it? I think that's pretty much it as far as spices go. Yeah, it is. So this is already melting, as you can see. It's looking pretty good. I mean, hopefully it's not overexposed. Again, new setup today. If you watch my other videos, you'll see I'm in my kitchen, which I'm still gonna make videos in my kitchen too, but I like having this outdoor option if I have family here and they don't want me cooking because they're trying to enjoy the house. And yeah, you know, when you're doing recording, you have to have silence. So there you can see the butter is melting. Not the best camera angle here. See if we can get a better shot of it. There you go, that's a little better, right? See that a little better? Hopefully that camera's not in the shot now. It might be. No, I think we're good. <laughs> I'm doing camera work. Anyway, so we're making Chex Mix. So we're melting down the six tablespoons of butter. You could do this in a microwave even if you wanted to. You just want the butter nice and melted. I like to do it on a stove top because it's not as easy to burn it. You know that like burnt butter kind of thing you can get going where it's like, smells like a lobster roll? <laughs> I don't know. It's a weird thing from my childhood. I used to love lobster rolls when I was a kid and I ate so many. One time I got sick. Now I can't eat a lobster roll really. I mean, I can. I think I should venture out and try it again. You know, world's best lobster roll would be a great video to do on the channel. Maybe I'm gonna have to do a world's best lobster roll. Okay, so that's pretty much melted. We're gonna take it off the heat and put it on something so it doesn't burn my counter. Let's turn this off. Yeah, that thing worked well. I like it. I might keep you, little burner. All right, so here's our butter, our little pot of butter, sitting there all warm and cozy. And now let's add our spices. Okay, in regards to this, these are heavy duty. We do a lot of spices. That's what makes it the world's best, guys. And it is gonna be amazing. So first we're gonna do two tablespoons. That's right, two tablespoons of seasoned salt. That's one, two. Then we're gonna do one tablespoon of onion powder. This is onion, oh, that's garlic. <laughs> one tablespoon of onion powder, which I have here. Put that in there. And then we'll do a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm not doing a ton of garlic powder because if you'll remember, we're actually putting real garlic in it. So we don't need a ton of garlic powder. The powder just helps make sure every bite has a little garlic flavor to it. If you just use these big chunks of garlic, there's a total possibility that some of the bites won't have any garlic hint at all. But when you use the powdered stuff, it really kind of coats all the cereal and all the other dry ingredients. So let's add our garlic in there. And now let's just mix this up a little bit. I think it's looking really good. Like I said, this is just super over the top seasoning filled 
Chex Mix, and it's gonna be incredible. All right, we're gonna add a little Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Worcestershire sauce? We're gonna do three tablespoons of this, guys. This is a lot. One, but I've cooked it a million times this way, and it's great. Two, and three. People like can't stop eating it, which is bad because it's super salty. This is not a healthy snack. This is definitely junk food for your Christmas party or you know whatever you're celebrating. This is a fun little bit of junk food you can bring along, but it's certainly not a health food. We need one more ingredient, special ingredient. As for the special ingredient or secret ingredient, Tabasco sauce, one, two, three, four, five-ish. <laughs> you can do as much as you want, you can go as hard as you want with the spice. I do about that much, which is like four or five little dashes of Tabasco. Mix that all in together, and then it goes into our dry ingredients. So let's bring that back over here. And it's really quite simple, guys. We just kind of dump it in, like so. And then you want to mix it around. Using your hands is okay, you can totally do that. I actually think it's a little easier to use your hands. Now I will say this, last time I made this, when I went and did World's Best Chex Mix, which is a different recipe on my channel, you should try that one too. Try them both, see which one you prefer. Last time I did this, I did not have a big enough bowl, and it was really annoying to do this part. So I definitely re recommend a giant bowl. This bowl is amazing. I got this at Ikea, actually, for like 20 bucks, and wow, what a bargain. I would buy 10 of them, but I don't need 10 of them. So I'm just gonna stick with the one. Now I have a bunch of seasoning left over in the bottom of the pan, so I went and got like a soft spatula so that I can try to get the rest of that out. I mean, might as well put all that flavor in there. That's why we added it all. So just get that all in there. I'd love to know your Chex Mix story. How's Chex Mix fit into your life? I ask that because I recently found out that Chex Mix is pretty widely known as a Christmas, New Year's type snack. Like it's seasonal. And for me, it's always been like an anytime snack. So I was trying to think like, where did Chex Mix most often enter my life? And it is actually Christmas. My mother-in-law always would make me a big batch of Chex Mix for Christmas and give it to me as a gift. She'd actually do two versions, this kind of Chex Mix and then the Nutty Buddies, which has the chocolate and the peanut butter. And we'll probably cook on this channel at some point here. But, so it does actually line up with my experience too, that it is a Christmas time snack. Does that line up for you guys as well? Had you ever even considered it? Are you looking near New Year's right now or is it middle of summer and you just want some Chex Mix? Because for me, I'll eat it anytime. We've got that all mixed in, all integrated. We need to cook it in something. We're gonna cook it in this giant, what's this called? Tasting dish, casserole dish? I don't know, but I'm gonna dump it all in there. Beautiful. Now this is like, Oh, it's a roasting pan. That's exactly what it is. It's just straight up a roasting pan. So you'd put like, you know, your Thanksgiving turkey in here and you'd put that in there. Now, last time again, I had like a brownie pan and it was a nightmare. It was falling all over the place. Everyone in the comments said, Dave, you need to get a roasting pan. And I did, and I'm so glad. Look at all this space. The nice thing about this is when you cook this, you're gonna need to stir it a lot. Having it with a lot of extra room here means you won't spill it all over your oven and so on and so forth. Now for cooking it. You've got three options. Inner rush option, normal option, or crazy Dave option. Crazy Dave option tastes the best, but you don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. Inner rush is in the microwave, not in a metal thing, by the way, in a bowl or something. Uh, two minutes, take it out, stir it. 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 A lot of people do it that way. It's eight total minutes in the microwave. It works fine. I think it comes out a little bit more chewy, a little more rubbery. I like it a little bit more crispy and crunchy, so I like the oven. Now the oven, you do 15 minutes, stir it, 15 minutes, stir it, 15 minutes, stir it, 15 minutes, stir it, and you do it at 250 degrees. But when I'm feeling extra saucy, <laughs> I use my smoker, my pellet smoker, and it comes out amazing. It's really, really good in the oven. It's like a 10 out of 10 in the oven, but on the smoker, it's like an 11 out of 10, which doesn't even make sense, but it is really that good. So I'm firing up my smoker. You probably can hear it in the background already. When it hits 250, we're gonna put this on, we're gonna cook it, and then we're gonna try it, and you're gonna have to try it at home because it's that good. All right, guys, our smoker's at 250 degrees. We're gonna put it in our smoker. Let's head over there. Oh, look at all that smoky goodness over here. Pop it on there. That's oh, gonna be so good. There we go. And we'll be back in 15. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. First 15 minutes has elapsed. We're gonna head over to the smoker. We're gonna stir up this Chex Mix really quick. And then we're gonna close that lid back. Well, let's just go over there and you'll see what I mean. All right, look at that. Looking smoky and good. Just take your spatula or a spoon and just mix it up. This is just to really avoid getting it to burn on the bottom of the tray. So moving it around here is a great option. Now, like I said, you're gonna do this cycle four times in total. 15 minutes stir, 15 minutes stir, 15 minutes stir, 15 minutes take it out. 
All right, it's been a labor of love, but here we are with the Chex Mix and it looks amazing. I just love that smoky look on it. It's just, I'm excited. So let's try it. Mm. Oh my gosh. I forgot how much the smoker adds. Again, it's gonna be great in the oven, amazing in the oven, but I haven't smoked it in a little while, so I kind of forgot how awesome the uh, smoker, smoky taste is on there as well. Let me see if I can get my daughter to come out and try it and give you her review. She's a Chex Mix connoisseur. All right, so Anna's here. She's gonna try the Chex Mix. Are you excited? I, I know you like Chex Mix. Yep. Try it out. It's a, a little bit of a unique style. You just go for the uh, crispy crunchies, huh? Yeah. She doesn't even like, she's the one who won't eat the chack, the cheese it she won't eat the goldfish, the pretzels, she just eats the cereal part. What do you think? Is good? Is that your favorite recipe? Can you taste that I did it on the smoker? Can you see that like smoky flavor kind of? Yeah, it has yeah? more spice to it and I like it spicy. More spice. Well, that's also the Tabasco I put in there. So, all right, thank you, Anna. How many thumbs up? All right, so I'd call that a success. Try this at home, guys. Again, doesn't need to be in the smoker. It can definitely be in the oven. It's gonna be amazing either way. But I highly recommend it. This is my favorite Chex Mix. Make sure you check out my other Chex Mix video too. Try them both. I'll put a link to it after this video so you can go check that out next. Watch all my videos. Basically, I'm doing the best recipes according to Google. I look them up, I test them, and I see how good they really are.